gentleman a uh, long time ago said, I heard you have grown tired of waiting for dry talk from us. So we sincerely welcome you. Despite your busy schedules, we really appreciate your keen interest in GIS talk. Uh, I am Jung Sung Yang, a volunteer here at GIC. Before the talk begins, please make sure your cell phones have been turned off to switch to silent mode. Now let's begin. Uh, are you interested in sports? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know any kind of sports in America? Soccer. Soccer? Football. Football. And do you know what is the difference between sports culture in America and Korea? No. Yes. <laughs> so because of that reason, here to take the time to share more about American sports culture and some thoughts about his home country is Robert David Grosjean, a professor of English at Jeonnam National University. He teaches courses in literature, especially poetry, and a course in American society and popular culture, in which he usually covers American sports. He played a variety of youth sports himself and was a soccer coach and referee for many years. So now let's welcome our speaker, Robert David Grosjean, with a big round of applause. Thank you for that nice introduction. And today's talk is actually a, a, a variation on what I do in my uh, popular culture class. I put together two or three different PowerPoint presentations. So uh, for all of you that are Chungnam University students, uh, you can certainly uh, join me in the class next semester if you're interested. OK, can we go to the first slide? So uh, to, to start, uh, I want to indicate the importance of sports uh, in the United States by uh, looking at this comparison of George W. Bush and Barack Obama throwing out a first pitch at the World Series. And of course, the World Series is the championship of American baseball, uh, and uh, Major League Baseball, in typical American arrogance, we call it the World Series. Uh, and uh, the president uh, usually show, throws out the pitch at uh, the first game, the first pitch of the first game. And so here, uh, I have to tell you, I'm, very, I'm a liberal, uh, uh, part of the left, so this is a really disappointing video to me. But let's take a look at the comparison between presidents. Look at that, right down the center. I can't even reach the plate. That's it, Brian. That's what I'm doing. You're fine. Oh, there you go again. All right, you can turn that off now. The rest was broke. Yeah, the rest was broke. But uh, if we take a look at the next one, the next uh, picture, uh, uh, this is way cooler than throwing a baseball across the cliff. Because you know, he, he played on a state championship basketball team, Barack Obama, in Hawaii, where he was born. Now watch this. I love it. <laughs> Doesn't even warm up. First shot. Switch. Okay, that's good. That's good. That, that's going to redeem my pride in the Democrat. I want to see Pac do that. Um, but if we can, uh, of, of course, sports is important in U.S. society. Uh, there are actually several uh, sources at the U.S. Embassy website that uh, talk about uh, American sports. And the next slide, the next slide. Uh, is from one of those. Uh, and I asked my students in the class what good things about sports are mentioned and what bad things about sports are mentioned. But of course, this is American propaganda, so there are no bad things about sports mentioned. I'll just tell you that uh, up front. Okay, 
but of course, here's the American attitude towards sports, and I think this is probably probably true in a lot of cases. Sports help individuals develop character, discipline, confidence, self-esteem, and a sense of well-being. Of course, sports, for some people, do exactly the opposite of all of those things, uh, particularly, for instance, this one. If a, a young person, is, particularly a young man, is not very good at sports, he gets laughed at a lot, maybe. There are problems with, you, uh, with sports uh, and young people in the United States. Uh, if you're not very good at sports and you're forced to participate, your confidence can suffer. Let's see the next slide. But not according to uh, the, the website here. And it teaches social values, this is true, like teamwork, sportsmanship, self-discipline, and persistence that are highly regarded in U.S. society. Probably any, any other society as well. Let's go, next, next slide please. Next slide, we'll just skip over that one. Um, and here are the most popular professional team sports in the U.S., depending on how one measures popularity. Uh, and I'm thinking about sports that most people watch, the team sports. Uh, uh, and of course, oh, I forgot. Today, this weekend, what is this weekend in sports in America? Anybody? Yes, so I have my Vikings hat on. <laughs> the, um, the NFL opens this weekend. Uh, the Vikings will triumph over the Detroit Lions tomorrow, um, we hope. But uh, actually, the most popular spectator sport in America is not a team sport, well, it's sort of team, but it's an individual sport. Uh, it's NASCAR. What is NASCAR? Anybody? Car. Car racing. All right, we'll take a look at it. Uh, that's actually the most popular spectator sport on television in the United States. More people watch. Uh, once when I first, I lived in Virginia, which is in the south. There's a major racetrack in Virginia. When I first moved to Virginia, I was driving down the road and I listened to the radio. I started turning on the radio and NASCAR was on the radio. And I thought, why would you listen to car racing on the radio? Because all you heard was, vroom. And they just explained. There was nothing to hear. There was no But anyway, they were listening to it on the radio. So, which of these six sports, do you know, originated in North America? I think there are six. Football, basketball, baseball, ice hockey, soccer, and or what the rest of the world in English calls football, uh, and NASCAR. Which of those six sports originated in North America. Anybody? Give me one. Baseball. Baseball. Football. Football. Yeah. America. What? Football. Football. Originated in North America. What else? Well, we Right. Actually, five of these six sports originated in, in uh, North America. Next slide. Uh, oh, there's, there's NASCAR. Uh, National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing is NASCAR. Um, and the five sports are baseball, right? football, basketball, ice hockey, originated in Canada, not the United States, but in North America, and then NASCAR. Now, now auto racing originated uh, like uh, Le Mans races in Europe, but stock car racing originated in America. And originally, uh, the, the most of the drivers in stock car racing learned their trade as bootleggers. That is, driving in the, the hills of Appalachia in the south with illegal whiskey in the back of their cars, trying to escape the police. And those are the people who became the first uh, NASCAR racers because they were very practiced at driving fast and escaping from the police. Next slide. Uh, uh, what sport, does anybody know, traditionally has been considered America's pastime? Uh, or America's national pastime? Anybody? Baseball. 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 
people argue about this. No, football is really America's sport, and that is the most popular team sport. But traditionally, we've seen baseball as America's pastime, partly because it's played in a big green field like a pasture, and there's a, there's a sort of a rural sense to baseball, and that's uh, one of the reasons we call it America's pastime. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, now, uh, in America, well, when you go to a Korean baseball game, too, there are lots of songs, right? All the players have a, have a song. The good players have their own songs. Uh, at the end of uh, the Kia Tigers games, we sing what? Kia Opshinen Mozart. I couldn't live without the, the Kia Tigers. Uh, and, and Korean fans are singing throughout the games, and we have cheerleaders for baseball. There are no cheerleaders in American baseball. Football, but not in baseball. Uh, but in any, any case, uh, everywhere, almost everywhere, this is a, a song that uh, all Americans know, and we sing it during the seventh inning stretch. That's between the top and the bottom of the seventh inning. Uh, hang on, just don't start yet. Go back to the PowerPoint for just a second. Okay. Um, and, uh, well, we're going to take a look at it. Go to the next slide. And here's what I, what I want you to do if you can play this song and then flip back to the side slide. And so all of you people who are practicing your English, you can listen and see if you can fill in the blanks. Okay? <laughs> see if you can hear the words. And you may sing along, all you Americans. I'll sing. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ground. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back, cause it's root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Or it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Next slide. There you go. What'd you do? All those words? Now, everybody sing. We have all the words. Here we go. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. I need some peanuts and cracker chest. I don't care if I never hit that close. It's root, root, root for the home team. Percentage of uh, of young people do you think in pre under 17? Uh, under 17. Uh, what percent do you think participate at some time in organized sports? 80? You think 80 percent of 70? 70 percent of Korean young people play on a, a sports team? In Korea? Korea. No. No, 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 no. How many in Korea? What do you think? 40? 10? Yeah, not, uh, not very many young Koreans have an opportunity to participate in sports because you're so busy studying, right? You have to study, study. Uh, although more these days, more and more people, if you go out along the Kwangju, uh, well not Kwangju, but the, uh, the, the the river that goes down to Mokpo. What's the name of that river? Yangsan. And Yangsan Kang. If you go to Yangsan River, you'll see soccer fields and baseball diamonds and young people playing. So there, there are more opportunities than there used to be. But in America, it's almost the opposite. People are much more interested in sports than in school. Even parents sometimes are more interested in having 
their, their children participate in sports and do homework. 69% uh, of girls, because uh, I, I think many fewer girls than boys in Korea participate in sports, but it's almost the same. 69% of girls and 75% of boys participate in some sort of organized or team sport. Uh, not just playing at the park, but with coaches and referees and things like that. Both of my children, I uh, have a son and a daughter, they both played soccer from the time they were small until they graduated from high school and then on into college. My daughter continued to play. Uh, not on a very good team, however. Uh, but I'll just tell you a story about how important some Americans uh, see sports as being. And, and I think this is a very a story that is very foreign, very different from the way Koreans would think. Uh, when my daughter has started middle school, she was in seventh grade. Yeah, after school, there was a meeting uh, with the parents and teachers one evening. They always have those, and so the teachers can explain what they're doing in the classes, and the parents can ask questions. Uh, and I thought, well, they're not giving very much homework to my, to my daughter. So I went to the meeting, and one of the other parents raised her hand, and she said, you're giving way too much homework. My son needs to play football, and he doesn't have time to do all the homework. Now, can you imagine a Korean parent saying, stop giving my child so much homework. He needs to play sports instead. That probably would never happen here. But in America, the, I think the woman thought her, her son was going to grow up to be a professional football player or something. And so the goal was sports, not studying. I feel sorry for the young man who probably now is, uh, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but not uh, something that pays very well. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, here's a list of sports. What do you think are the three most popular sports or recreational activities for American young people ages 7 to 17? Uh, some are team sports, some are individual sports. And here are the list. Which do you think is, just I'll ask a few people, see if anybody gets it right. What's the most popular? We have volleyball, tennis, reverse alphabetical order. Volleyball, tennis, swimming, softball, soccer, running or jogging, hiking, football, fishing, exercise, walking. I like fishing. Well. <laughs> Bowling, billiards, billiards, uh, bicycle riding, basketball, baseball, and aerobics. What do you think? What do you think would be the most popular for young people in America? Basketball, basketball, baseball, football, volleyball, volleyball, football. Well, maybe football is not real popular with girls. Um, so it's all people. Okay. No, I didn't hear it. Yeah. Volleyball, soccer. Soccer, no. Although it's one of the best. Basketball, no. Volleyball. Ball, right? Swimming. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, okay, swimming. Yes, next slide. Here are the most, uh, these are kind of surprising. Swimming, bicycle riding, bowling. Nobody said bowling, did you? These are the most popular. Basketball is sport. And exercise walking. And these are from the census. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, competition. That's one uh, very American value we, next slide, that we see in sports. And this is from Vince Lombardi, a famous American football coach. I wonder if anybody, I suppose some of the Americans here might know this. Wizard, winning isn't blank, it's the blank thing. Anybody? Winning isn't everything. everything. It's the only thing. Next slide, right. Winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. Uh, and he was, he was a very mean coach, a tough coach. But they, he won a lot of championships. Uh, and so this is repeated all the time. It turns out... Vince Lombardi didn't really say that, but it's always attributed to Vince Lombardi. Next slide. Uh, here's what he actually said. Winning is not everything, next slide, but making the effort to win is. It's not quite so harsh as winning is the only thing. Trying hard is what he's really talking about. And there's the next slide. 
from Grantley Rice, a, a famous American sports writer, which is a much more gentlemanly way to look at sports. He says, it's not that you won or lost. That's not the important thing about sports, is how you played the game. And these, I think, really typify two different attitudes toward youth sports, young people in sports in America. One, winning. The, our, our, the, the kids learn most by winning. If they don't win, they're little losers, right? Uh, and the other one is, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, they, they learn a lot of values by playing anyway. We don't care who wins. Those two different perspectives on youth sports. And as I told you, my children grew up playing soccer, and they played in very competitive leagues, but especially with my son, girls are a little bit different, we treat girls differently. When he was young, 10 or 11 years old, he played sports with these young boys who were much better than my son, and had fathers who were just, they coached and yelled and screamed all the time on the sidelines. And some of those, some of those uh, children eventually just quit playing. And they were much better than my son was, but he kept playing because he kept enjoying it, I guess, because I didn't yell at him as much as the other father. Next slide. Uh, but then Vince will already has his come back. If it doesn't matter who wins or loses, then why do they keep score? Okay, okay well, that's, that's the NFL. That's professional sports. Okay, next slide. Uh, what do you think that American youth, the players themselves, think is most important about playing a, a sport. Uh, what, we'll just go for number one. And here's a list, and I just, uh, I put these in order of shortest to longest sentence. To win, to have fun, to stay in shape, to, not, to play as part of a team, to do something I am good at, to learn new or improve my skills I already have. Which do you think is most important for children? Okay, that was a lot of different answers. Okay, let's see what the answer is. Next slide. Uh, the, when uh, uh, 28,000 boys and girls were asked, why do you play sports? The top answer was to have fun. I want to have fun. That's why they play. They don't care about winning uh, too much anyway. Or to, second, to do something I'm good at. And third, to improve my skills. Winning was not in the top ten answers for children. Now, next slide. Who emphasizes winning more than having fun? Next slide. Well, it's the adults, of course, that take over youth sports. Adult participation in youth sports can be very good. It is also one of the huge problems in American sports, and that parents uh, uh, are, are too aggressive. Instead of encouraging their children, uh, they're arguing with the referees. Or the coaches who think winning is the most important thing for 10-year-olds. Uh, next slide, please. And these are just a couple of different headlines. These are You see these often in soccer, particularly. Uh, uh, I guess it inspires. But this one, kids coach given jail for assault on referee. Uh, what he did was he followed the referee after he was a huge man, and the referee was about this size. And he followed the man and he headbutted him. And he gave him a concussion and put him in the hospital because he didn't like the way he was refereeing the game. Probably a volunteer referee or someone who was doing it so that children could have fun. But you read stories like this all the time. And this is just a snip from a video of a football game. Uh, and you can see, here they are, the parents are getting very involved in the football competition. Uh, and they're just pushing here, but they were also swinging at one another. So sometimes parents are the very worst part of youth sports in America. Next. Uh, one of the main reasons children give for dropping out of a sport it is that it was no longer fun. Who took the fun away? The adults. Uh, next slide. Uh, and so there are two different ways to emphasize youth sports programs. There are recreational programs and competitive programs. Again, 
These don't care about who wins, uh, and this winning is very important. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Here are two examples. These are all, uh, I want you to look at these and compare these. These are all recreational. A recreational league. You get a t-shirt. Cool, right? The night nice? you get the, you join the team, you get a t-shirt. This recreational league, you get a t-shirt. Nice. You always get t-shirts. Keep going. Let me see. Oh, look at more recreational. T-shirts, t-shirts. Next one. Uh, this is a competitive program, right? Uniforms are provided for players in this league. Right, they don't just get a t-shirt. They get these are baseball. They get the whole thing. They cool, right? I get a uniform. So what does that say to those children, right? So if you're uh, if you're not very good, you get a t-shirt. Right? <laughs> but if you're good, you get the whole uniform. You get to look like a real baseball player because you are a real baseball player, right? <laughs> uh, and those other kids, they're just t-shirt people. <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, that's good. Continue. Uh, and uh, these are uh, a comparison of two different American soccer leagues. This is uh, the American Youth, next slide, soccer organization. And notice what they emphasize. Everyone plays. Balanced teams, they try to make the teams even. They divide. Uh, you don't have one coach who tries to grab up all the good players. They try to take all the players and spread them out. And the players are graded every year. Open registration. Anybody can play. You don't have to try out. You don't have to. Uh, and if you try out, people can say, well, you're good enough. You're not good enough. You can play. You can. But they don't have tryouts. It's open registration. Anybody can play. They insist positive coaching. Encourage the children. I identify the things they do well and encourage them uh, in the things they don't do well. Uh, good sportsmanship. You can't yell at the referees. I learned this. That doesn't always work. I was a referee for many years in American youth soccer organizations. Uh, and usually they're pretty good. Uh, or you remind them because the parents get excited and you can say, all right, just let the children play. And they'll, they'll realize we were being bad. Uh, and then player development. Next slide. That's versus the uh, United States Youth Soccer Organization. Uh, next slide, please. And here's an example. Uh, uh, these are just three things I took off the web page for the U.S. Uh, youth Soccer, U.S. Youth Soccer. Notice it's all about championships, champions, Nas the, the National League teams announced. Okay, this is very competitive. The National League teams. That's the, the whole country representative. But this one, uh, uh, and it starts when they're very young, U8 maybe, they emphasize competition and championships, which is, can be okay uh, as well. Next, but there's an example of the, the two different approaches towards sports. One, everybody plays, we want even teams. The other, the point is to find out who's the best, right? Not to have fun. Well, to have fun, but to win. Uh, okay, uh, here are other youth sports organizations. Uh, Pop Warner, it used to be just football when I was a young man, but the world has changed and now it's also cheer and dance. Uh, so that uh, it's not just for boys, but this is for girls. Uh, and some boys want to do cheering as well. Because cheering is very athletic. It's not, we're not talking about the cheerleaders for the Kia Tiger. Right, go, go. They're, they do, they, they're like gymnasts. It's very, very athletic. They do big pyramids. It's dangerous. It's hard. Uh, they're in much better shape, physical shape, probably the cheerleaders, than a lot of the football players. Uh, but it's very competitive. It's very athletic. Uh, this is, uh, there are many different baseball leagues in America. Let's jump to the next slide. Now here is Pop Warner. Remember, American football, this is, this is the web page, but also football, cheer, and dance. Next page. But I, now this is, go back, go back one. But now this, I'm just going to make this a little bit larger on the next page. Enlarge it. And it is for boys and girls. But what's emphasized here? NFL, partners, football camp, uh, limited contact at football. Scholarship, I don't know, I don't know, scholarship, 
scout. Oh, finally, cheerleaders. Uh, well, okay, and now sports concussions. That's about football. People keep getting hit in the head in football. Right now, concussions are a huge issue in American football. Because lots of people, uh, uh, professional football players, have gotten brain damage from, from uh, the concussions, from, from the impact on their head. So many concussions. Uh, okay, how many got one? Two of these are about cheerleaders, this one and this one. Almost all the rest are, of course, about football. So while the organization uh, gives the appearance of treating boys and girls equally in sports, the boys are obviously much privileged. The important thing here is football. They're just, they had to cheer and dance to be politically correct, and for another reason, a legal reason. They had to, right? they had to have. Next slide. And that's this, Title IX. Uh, it was passed in 1972. So uh, I will tell you that when I was in high school, which was in 1972 and earlier, uh, when I was in high school, there, there were lots of boys' teams, but almost no girls' teams. Girls did not have opportunities to play. And in 1972, this law was passed, Title IX. It changed the world of sports, of youth sports. Because what it says is there are many different areas, but its most obvious effect is on sports, on athletics. Because, let me see. Okay. Uh, if an educational program or some other program receives federal funding, money from the government, they must have equal opportunity for boys and for girls. Thus, cheer squads arise. And the girls get more opportunity to, to participate in an athletic event. So, if you have a team for the boys, you need a team for the girls. Thus, there was baseball for boys and then softball for girls. There was basketball for boys and basketball for girls then, after 1972. Football for boys, cheer for the girls, so that each, both boys and girls, have equal opportunities. That's why um, and there are almost 70% of girls who participate, 75% of boys. They're, they're almost the same. They're very close, probably much closer than in Korea, the, the, the participation of boys and girls. Okay, next. Uh, and here's, okay, let, let's go to the the internet uh, for Stanton, Virginia. Here's just an example of high school sports. Because I think in Korea, what are there? Are 59 in Korea athletic high schools, right? Is that, does anybody know that number for sure? There are 59, a, a, I think it's 59, athletic high schools in Korea. High schools that sponsor sports. The rest of the high schools in Korea don't have sports teams, right? Uh, only a few, what, Jail, right down the street, right? Bangju Jail High School, famous baseball high school. What, uh, but, but now look, at this is every high school. If you could scroll down here, look, at, here are the different, some of the different teams. Let's just start at the top. Baseball, there's, there's the, the main team and the junior team, junior varsity. Then this is, representative of almost any high school in America. Look at all the opportunities that, that, that the people have. There's baseball, that's for boys. Basketball, boys and girls, and boys and girls. Cheerleading, cross country, both boys and girls. That's cross country, is running long distances through fields and over hills and things like that. Running across country, okay? Uh, just scroll down here. Football, that's for boys. Golf, for both boys and girls, a high school sport. Indoor track, uh, soccer, this is the team, this is the high school my children went to. That's one of these games. My, 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 uh, my children played this. Softball for girls. Uh, tennis, boys and girls, track and field, volleyball, and wrestling. One interesting thing about wrestling these days is wrestling 
uh, used to be just a boys' sport. But some girls said, I want to be a wrestler. And so they went to court. And they were now, it, uh, wrestling teams must permit at public schools, must let girls on the team if they want to be wrestlers. Okay? They must. So, uh, okay, back to the PowerPoint presentation. But that's just an example of high schools. And that high school, uh, my high school had a swimming team. We had a pool, swimming pool right in the high school. So we had a swimming team as well as other teams. And then there we had an ice hockey team. Because I grew up in Minnesota, and our ice hockey team actually played outdoors on the ice instead of indoors in an ice arena. But the, the Virginia school, they don't have ice hockey in Virginia. It's not cold enough. Okay, next, next slide. Sometimes, however, high school sports get a little too much emphasis. In 2012, a Texas town, Allen, Texas, built a $60 million high school football stadium. This is a high school football stadium. That's about, I like this, for a, foot, a high school football stadium. You could build a pretty nice high school for that much money. Uh, and, and But Texas is famous for being football crazy of just generally. Any Texans here? Anybody from Texas here? Okay, they're known for being just generally stupid. <laughs> uh, they keep electing the, the, the dumbass for government. Uh, next slide. Uh, okay, now here are high school sports. We looked at, uh, these are the sports sponsored by high schools. High school people from about 16 to 18, or 15 to 18. Here are the top 10 girls sports, in no particular order, or alphabetical order. Which do you think is most popular for girls? Basketball, spirit squads, that's cheering. Uh, cross country, lacrosse, also by the way, a sport invented in North America by Native Americans originally. It's a, adapted from a Native American sport. Soccer, softball, swimming, and diving, tennis, track and field. And here are the boys. Baseball, basketball, cross country, football, golf, soccer, swimming, and diving, tennis, track and field, wrestling. What do you suppose might be the most popular sport for high school girls? Basketball, I, I forgot. Let's see the next slide. Track and field. One of the reasons is many girls can play on the team. There are lots of different events. That's why football for boys. A football team can have 100 kids, 80 kids. So lots of people can participate. So it's more popular. Uh, but track and field is very popular. Next. Uh, and in college, we continue to play sports in college. And I'm going to have to skip over some of this, but uh, okay. And this is, and there are lots of, again, not like Korea. There's the one between Korea and Yonsei, right? There's the famous athletic contests between Korea and Yonsei. But, uh, but that's about it. For, it. There's other, but not so much sports teams, Tikyo, or representative sports teams from colleges in Korea. All colleges, almost every college in America has sports teams, like the high schools. Big colleges, small colleges, and those are intercollegiate, that between colleges. But what I want to talk about are intramural sports. Those are sports that just the students at the college play. And I want to talk about this because I have some jokes. Uh, I played football, uh, basketball, and softball when I was in college with a group of my friends. We called our team the Riders of Rohan. You know the Riders? Who knows the Riders of Rohan? Anybody? Has anybody read The Lord of the Rings? Okay. We were nerds. Yeah, we were nerds. Okay, next slide. The Riders of Rohan. That's the joke. It's me. Next slide. Uh, that was it. But we played broom ball. This is cool. You ever heard of broom ball? You get out on the ice. You take a ball, and you get some brooms, and you play ice hockey rules, and you try to score at all. It's, called, it's a simple game. Look at these guys. Now, they have special brooms, broom ball brooms. But these people, they just got brooms, just regular brooms. To put in. Look at those old guys. That was my team. No, not that old. OK, next slide. Uh, 
And uh, continue, I'm not going to talk too much about this. I just, I'll oh, take a look at this intramural sport now. I thought this was really cool. Uh, this is from Jam, James Madison University in Virginia. This sport, this is an, in, you, you get your team together. Oh, stick with that. It's called Battleship. I've never heard of Battleship before, but doesn't this look like fun? You get a canoe, and you get four people, and see they have little shields, and then each person gets a bucket, and you have to take water with a bucket and throw it in the other people's boats until they sink, and that's, that's Battleship. That's a sport. I want to go back to JMU and play Battleship. I've never heard of this before. That looks like a lot of fun. If you know how to swim. They to try to swim. Okay, next slide. And I think, uh, keep going, I just want to look at a couple. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, oh, 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 I guess we're just about out of time. I want to show you one more thing. Because in colleges, one of the biggest, most exciting athletic events of the year, that is colleges with football teams, is homecoming. That's when the graduates from years ago come back to the college and meet up with one another, and it usually centers on a football game. But there are also dances and parades. And let's look at it. Because football, in, in colleges, men's football and men's basketball are the two huge sports. In almost every state in America, the highest paid public official is either the, the uh, at, at the big college, the basketball coach or the football coach. They make more than college presidents, they make more than governors, they make more than anybody. Um, so they, uh, college sports are huge in America. Next slide, we're just about there. This is the homecoming again at James Madison, uh, and here's what we have. Uh, here, oh, decade, days, mystery, Mrs. Madison, purple out, residence hall banner contest, blood drive, pep rally, golf tournament, and then dinner and dancing. All this stuff and the homecoming week. It's fun. Okay, next slide. Uh, and this is tailgating. People sit out in the parking lot at the football game, and they open up the tailgate. Tui moon, tui moon, right? Tailgate. Uh, of, of the of their cars, and they have a barbecue, and they, they make hamburgers. It's just fun. Uh, and then there's a big parade. And can anybody tell me what college this is? Anybody? Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yes, Bucky. But that's my uh, that's my uh, alma mater. Uh, so that's uh, I showed you the picture of the uh, of the. Uh, oh, that's he's a badger. That's Bucky Badger. His name is Bucky Badger. That's why it's Bucky. Okay, next. Uh, oh, no. One last thing I'm going to show you. I'm going to show the picture from Notre Dame. Uh, okay. This, see that? This is from Notre Dame, or Notre Dame, we pronounce it, in, in uh, University of Notre Dame, in South Bend, Indiana. It's a legendary football program, but it's also a Catholic school. Uh, and so what they did was they built a church that you can see from inside the football stadium. And there's a mural, and this is Jesus. This is Jesus. Um, you know what the signal is for a touchdown? In American football, so look at Jesus. Jesus. They call him the Touchdown Jesus. He's famous in American college football. This is Touchdown Jesus at the University of Notre Dame. So I started out connecting sports to politics, and I guess I'll end up with the uh, connecting sports with religion, the two topics you're always supposed to avoid. Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, that's, I have more, but uh, no, no more time. That's, I've gone on too long, so questions, I guess, we're going to have now.